vectors. Let's talk about them. In Houdini, you're often going to find yourself using vectors. Now, before we can even go into understanding vectors, we need to understand scalar values. So when we look at a scalar value, we're looking at integers and we're looking at floats. Now, when we're looking at integers, we're looking at whole numbers, any of the counting numbers, right? It can be negative or positive. It's useful for counting things. So if we look at something where we say we have 3,228 apples, right? An apple is a single unit, so it's very easy to measure it without any decimal places. But if you only have $2.48 in your bank account because you spent all your money on apples, well, then that's going to need a fraction because we're now saying 2.48 and that's a float. So we have integers where it's whole counting numbers or we have floats where we're looking at a decimal value. So the other way to look at our scalar values are as a magnitude. Now, what do I mean by magnitude? Well, a magnitude means an amount. So if we look at say distance, right? How far is city A from city B? Well, that's a particular distance between the two, right? There's a magnitude. However, that doesn't describe the direction between city A and city B. That's where vectors become useful because vectors are not only a magnitude, they're also a direction. So if we look at it like that, then we know that town A and town B are a certain distance apart, but we also know the direction from town A to town B. That's how vectors become useful. So how are vectors used in Houdini and what do they look like? Well, a very common vector that you may have seen is RGB. When we look at RGB, we're looking at red, green, and blue, right? It's common in design. It's common all over the place. When you order your RGB lights off of Amazon, RGB stands for red, green, blue. And each component represents how much of that particular color exists. So if we have some red, some green, and some blue, that gives us a particular color, right? So if we have one for red, so a value of one, and a value for zero on the others, we're going to have just red, right? And as we adjust these values, we get different colors. Each of them is its own value, but combined, they give us color. So vectors are also how you look at position. If we're looking at a position in space, we have X, Y, and Z, much like we have R, G, and B. It's three components that work together to give us a single position. So if we look at X, Y, and Z, and this is actually important, inside of Houdini, X, Y, and Z are always in that order. Now, what do I mean when I say X, Y, and Z? X, Y, and Z are the three axes inside of Houdini, where X is your horizontal axis, Y is your vertical axis, and Z represents your depth. So if we are trying to describe a position in space, we'll use a vector. We'll say it's this much along X, this much along Y, and this much along Z. So if we have a position where it's one, zero, zero, then we're looking at a position where X is one, Y is zero, Z is zero. So to help explain this, I'm going to go inside of Houdini and I've prepared a little thing that you can play around with. I'll also include it in the pinned comment so you can download it and play with it yourself. So we're going to go ahead and what I have over here is simply this little thing where I can control the position of a point in space and from the zero point, it will draw an end point and that represents a vector. So if we look in the top right, those are our three vector values, X, Y, and Z. And over here, I'm showing you the arrow that it creates. So if we look at the position as it changes, our vector moves around in space. Now, back to the concept of magnitude and direction. As you can see from this arrow, right, we can have it point in any direction we'd like. However, we can also have it point in that direction with a particular magnitude. So in this case, it's kind of pointing diagonally, but that's just the direction. The magnitude is how much it's pointing in that direction. So if we reduce it, right, that's a lower magnitude. If we increase it, that's a higher magnitude. Now, something that's interesting is that when you normalize a vector, you're eliminating the component of magnitude. So let's just go ahead and normalize this vector. And what you'll notice is that no matter how far away or close in I move this, it no longer affects the magnitude. It's only affecting the direction. And this is where normals come in. If you look at normals on a piece of geometry, you don't need a magnitude, you only need a direction. So normals are, as you might have guessed, normalized. We've removed the component of magnitude and we only have the direction. So another fun thing to play around with and to kind of get this understanding of vectors down, we can go into this little cannonball structure thing that I've set up over here. All I have is that same thing that we just saw where I have a little control and that allows me to control my magnitude and my direction, just like that. So it's a vector. 
but now it's controlling the direction of a cannon. And I've got a little dot network over there. And I can now choose how much force I want to give to a cannonball. So I can choose a direction and a magnitude, and I can press play, and it'll shoot out a cannonball in that direction, right? So this is what it's doing. It's choosing a direction, and this is a great way to think about it as a cannon, right? We can choose a direction, and then we can choose how much force we want in that direction, how much magnitude we want. So that becomes extremely useful for representing things like velocity, where we need to know not only which direction something's moving in, but how fast, right? So how much of a magnitude does it have? And there's so many use cases for vectors. And once again, as I said, this file will be available for you to play around with. So we can try something where we have an extremely low magnitude in a direction and the ball just kind of rolls out. It's a little bit sad, but then we can push that magnitude way up and then the ball shoots out and covers a lot of distance, right? Because we've just adjusted the magnitude. And a fun little thing that Houdini does is also if you look at your transform handles or the axes in the bottom left of your viewport, you'll notice that they're also red, green, and blue, right? RGB, and they correspond to X, Y, and Z. So Houdini has color coded it in a way that makes sense, right? X, Y, and Z, R, G, and B. Perfect. So that's all for this speedy Houdini video. I hope that this helped you out. Um, if you'd like more information on vectors and scalars and things like that, let me know. I'll make a more in-depth video if it's something that you want. Um, but hopefully this just gives you a basic understanding of vectors and how they're used, what a magnitude is, what a direction is, and all of those things. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.